This has been a very special season in many ways. First, we can look at the outstanding weather. Second, the Cleveland Muni football celebrates its 100th season. Children were blessed with so much more. They played on beautiful fields. Volunteers came back and gave back to teach them the game of football and life in the most positive, fun experience. Today, we, con we continue our Youth Muni Football Series Championship Games at Collinwood Athletic Complex, where some of Cleveland's greatest kids, ages 10 and 11, again, no weight limit, will compete for their league championship. The Pee Wee Division had a total of 21 teams involving some 460 players, and it comes down to these two teams. Welcome to Collinwood Football Field for the 2019 Pee Wee Championship game between the Collinwood Cobras and the Garden Valley Falcons. Hi, I'm Tim Wells. My partner, John Good, is in the house. John, we always hear about a lot of excitement, nice football weather. Two solid teams come into this game with different strengths. When you look at both of them, we'll talk about that. But how do you see this game today? I see this being an exciting game, Tim, and uh, thank you. It's a bit, a bit, I'm blessed to be here. The C Cobras, exciting team, Valley uh, Garden Valley, another exciting team. Two teams with top performers in the league all year long. They're on the top of the defensive side of statistics, the offensive side of statistics. And David Morgan and Danny Solomon has done a real solid job this year getting these two teams to the championship. Well, let's talk first about the Garden Valley Falcons. Five and one. They're ranked number four in the league in defense. Their playoff wins 14 to 13 over George Monroe, 12 nothing over the Saints, and 26 nothing over the Wolverines. But what did Danny say were the keys for his team for today? The keys for Danny Solomon and the Garden Valley Falcons today is to win the line of scrimmage. They're a pistol team. They must have good snaps to prevent turnovers and limit those turnovers and keep good field position. And obviously, it takes some great key players that play well, and they have some pretty good ones at that. And it starts with number one on the left, LaShawn Fair. Yeah, LaShawn Fair, that name does sound familiar, and it is familiar to all you Muni fans out there. He's been around for a long time, and he's doing his thing again this year. He's smart, he's a leader, a three-year quarterback, athletic, 155 pounds. I didn't think he'd ever get up to be that high, really. But he's an accurate packer, passer. He makes quick pass plays, power runner, puts the ball very accurately right there where his players can catch the football. And in the middle, you got number five, Matthew Valentine. And on the, on, on the right is number 13, Marking Payne. Tell us a little bit about those two, John. Yeah, Matthew Valentine is a good athlete as well, wide receiver. Uh, he's the left outside linebacker. Big play Matt is what they call him on the slant plays. He's got great hands. He's quick. He runs outside, smart. A straight-A student, which is what we like to see. And Mark, uh, Mark King Payne, a left tackle. He's mean. He's a right outside linebacker. He'll hit you. He's athletic, aggressive, and he's the most improved player. And again, like I said, Tim, he'll, he'll lay the wood. And our home team today, they come from right here to Collinwood Cobras. They're 6-0 and under Coach David Morgan. They have the number one offense in the league during the regular season, 172 points. Number two in defense, they've only given up seven points all season. Then they go to the playoffs, win 6 nothing over Sims Raiders. They beat the Ohio Cardinals in overtime, 12-6. But what did Coach Morgan tell you, John, the keys were for his team today? The keys for his team is to play aggressive and be smart, limit the penalties, and execute plays on both offense and defense. And obviously, when you look at their team, the Conwood Cobras, they have some outstanding key players, and it starts with the number one league scorer, 21 Ronnie Taylor on the left. Yeah, Ronnie Taylor is a speed guy, creates a lot of mit, uh, mismatches with that offensive scheme that they run, very aggressive defensively off the edge. And obviously, when you look at that, you have number five in the middle, Sirius Jones, and number 20. Eight on the right, Shivell Johnson. Tell us a little bit about those two. Yeah, just joining Ronnie Taylor, another a group of athletes. Strong runner is Sirius Jones. He's the running back, middle linebacker, so he'll lay the wood on you. He's a strong runner, hard hitter, high energy on defense, so he really gets those guys to rally, and it shows in the statistics on the, the amount of points they've been scored on. Shivell Johnson, a left tackle, 
defensive end. He's a great blocker, controls the line, and plays with the edge of aggression. Solid defensive end and controls that outside leverage to push things back in so his compadres can make some plays as well. Well, folks, stay with us because when we come back, we'll have the player introductions and in the national anthem and the start of the 2019 Pee Wee Championship game. Hi, I'm Mayor Frank Jackson. You've probably seen media coverage of the growing opioid epidemic in Northeastern Ohio. But what you might not know is how many of these tragedies begin with a seemingly innocent prescription for pain medication. That is why we're teaming with the Cuyahoga County Opiate Marketing Task Force to encourage you to know the risk. Go to the website on your screen to learn which pills are opiates and alternative ways of dealing with pain which starts as a prescription can end with addiction, so no to risk. Right now we're gonna go over to Jason Dunn for the player introductions. Good afternoon and welcome to Collinwood Athletic Complex. As we celebrate 100 years of Cleveland Muni football. This is our 2019 Pee Wee Division Championship game. And we're gonna do the player introductions and we're gonna start with the Garden Valley Falcons, American Conference Champions. <laughs> Starting off for Garden Valley, Number one, LaShawn Fair, sixth grader, Anton Gradina. Number two, Kalen Bailey, Bolton, fifth grader. Number three, Jacquez Guest, Maple Heights Middle School, sixth grader. Number four, Rayshawn Duncan, Harvey Rice, fifth grader. Number five, Matthew Valentine, Whitney Young, sixth grader. Number six, Dylan Clay, E-Prep, seventh grader. Number seven, Dyshawn Atkins, Alfred Bennett, fifth grader. Number eight, Jamarion Chambers, Bolton, sixth grader. Number 10, Jaheem Edwards, Miles Elementary, fifth grader. Number 11, Richard Amy Jr., St. Adelbert, fifth grader. Number 12, Keon Johnson, Garfield Heights Middle School, sixth grader. Number 13, Marquine Payne, Ohio College Prep, fifth grader. Number 15, Deshaun Powell, North Coast Academy, fifth grader. Number 16, Sincere Holmes. Number 17, Evandrew Edwards, George Washington Carver, fourth grader. Number 18, Tavelle Steele Jr., Anton Gradina, fourth grader. And number 30, Tawan Talley, Miles Elementary, sixth grader. The Garden Valley Falcons are coordinated by Danny Salomon, head coach Danny Salomon, offensive coordinator, Codell Jones, defensive coordinator, Mike Wells Jr., Mike Wells Sr., Javon Farrow, Devontae Ransom, Dante Howard, James Hennings, and Lamont Smith. It's your Garden Valley Falcons. Now, your 2019 National Division Champion, Collinwood Cobras.
number one, Antonio Robinson, Noble Academy, fifth grader. Four, Central, sixth grader. Number five, Sirius Jones, St. Stan's, fifth grader. Number six, Xavier Thomas, Euclid Park. Number nine, Darwin Williams, Eastwood. Number 10, Makai Smith McCord, Richmond Heights Elementary, sixth grader. Number 11, Javion Levitt, St. John's Nottingham. Number 12, Stephen Hall Jr., E Prep, sixth grader. Number 13, Brandon Morgan, Sharton Hills, fifth grader. Number 14, Joseph Eifert, Citizens Leadership, sixth grader. Number 16, Romel Phillips, Richmond Heights Elementary, fifth grader. Number 17, Terrence Jenkins, Pinnacle Academy, fifth grader. Number 21, Ronnie Taylor Jr., Pinnacle Academy, fifth grader. Number 24, Ardell Freeman, St. Thomas Aquinas, fifth grader. Number 28, Chavelle Johnson, Euclid Prep, sixth grader. Number 50, Jacob Doss, Noble Academy, fifth grader. Number 60, Demarcus Caver, Noble Academy, sixth grader. Number 70, Lamar Briggs, East Academy, sixth grader. Number 95, Samaj Ellison, Sharpton Hills, fifth grader. Number 99, Christopher Lucius, Kenneth Clements, fifth grader. Number 90, Tyreek Yarion, Greenview, fifth grader. Number 15, Kayvon Carter, Shoreview, fifth grader. The Collinwood Cobras are coordinated by Darnell Coach Buck Banks. Head Coach David Morgan. Offensive Coordinator Kobe Orr. Defensive Coordinator Clarence Davis. Assistants Quinn Heath, Elbert Tillman, Floyd Tate, Anita Worley. Now at this time, I want to ask everybody to rise for the plan of the National Anthem.
We are moments away from championship action in the Pee Wee Championship game. And first, we're going to take a look at the officials that will be calling today's game. Again, they're all certified through the Ohio High School Athletic Association. On the left, Ralph King. He'll be our head referee, 33 years as a referee, a 1976 graduate of Shaw. He currently works for the City of Cleveland Recreation. The headline in the middle is Ed Washington, 22 years as an official, a graduate of St. Joe, and currently works in the Cleveland Water Department. And on the right, Damian Pride, a former football player in the league himself, seven years as a referee, 2004 graduate of St. Edward, and he currently works for F Buddy Contractors. John, they're going to have to deal with some special rules in the Pee Wee Division. Let's talk about those. Yeah, let's talk about those, Tim. We have eight minute quarters. It's a regulation clock. Each team will have four timeouts per game, one additional timeout in each overtime. There's no kickoffs for the safety of the ball players. The ball will begin play at the 35 yard line. There's no punts for the safety of the ball players. We'll advance the ball 20 yards. From the time they turn it over, the clock will resume at the snap after a 15 second runoff. Must be outside the opponent's 30 yard line to advance that ball. The automatic punt rule again is in effect, so the scoring goes with this. Touchdowns, conventional six points. Safety, conventional two points. The ball is placed in the middle of the field. Extra points if kicked is two points. And if they run or passed in the end zone, it's one point. Well, John, obviously, uh, perfect weather day, 60 degrees. And folks at home, we want you to be part of today's telecast as we'll be selecting an outstanding player for defense and offense. And you can see if you can match our crew. We also have a special guest in the game in our announcer's booth today. And he will be helping us with the rules and the things that are going on in the field. Carl Brown, a veteran official in Cleveland. Many of you know him. He's been around for a long time. Uh, Carl, welcome to TV20. Thank you so much, Tim. It's a pleasure to be here. And I know uh, we talk about the kids and the coaches, but obviously when a referee knows he's coming in and doing a championship game, what, what kind of things are they feeling like when they walk in today for a game like today? Well, in a situation such as this, uh, to even be on a championship game, to be axed, it's an absolute pleasure and it's an honor. And I consider it a blessing. So these guys are, they're feeling pretty good right now. They're going to hand it off and run right behind the left guard. That's a play you're going to see a lot of today, Tim, from this Garden Valley offense. They're going to run that Mr. Wonderful, Ron Fair, a lot. Here we are, second down and eight, just underway from Collinwood Field. There he goes. Comes up and makes a tackle. Straight yardage. And it looked like the left, uh, the actual, the safety came up and made tackle. That was Corey Orr from Collinwood. Yeah, that's just a good job right there. That offensive line, Tim, for the Garden Valley Falcons. Getting the hat on a hat, keeping those feet moving. And fair as he's done it since he's been in Muni football, he's always found a hole and made positive yards. So first down and 10, we're on the 48 yard line. They're gonna run to the right. And a great tackle by number five, Sirius Jones, their linebacker. Yeah, that's five on five right there. Matthew Valentine took a little time to get started so he can get out there. You got to be a little bit quicker, but great penetration right there by Sirius Jones, who's a heck of an athlete, and he's a speed guy. Comes up and make a play. They needed that right there because after that was first down and in initial drive here in today's game. Again, Sirius Jones, a league all-star, Noble Academy, a fifth grader, 10 years old on the tackle. Second down and 11. Looking to throw their first pass. Oh! And it and looked like it's pitch. incomplete or did he catch it? I don't see a signal. Uh, looks like they're going to... Incomplete pass. Incomplete pass. So third down and 11. 
Yeah, you can see right here, Fair drops back and delivers the football. He's got to be a little bit quicker on his release. The offensive receiver right there ran ran right into the into the defensive player. So third down 11, just underway here in the first quarter. Sometimes you like to see those guys just sit down in the hole and just play catch. Garden Valley, they're going to take it and run right between the their left nice. guard. They like running behind Mark King Payne. He was one of their key players, John. Yeah, LaShawn Fair gets upfield again. That offensive line gets a hat on the hat and let Fair do the rest. Payne comes up and makes the tackle. If he'd have got past him, we might be looking at six points. So Joe Effort, the left outside linebacker, he came up to make the stop. It's fourth down. Obviously, they'll go for it here. They need about four. Team in purple, Garden Valley Falcons. On the right, the Collinwood Cobras in the blue and white. Some Danny Solomon didn't like. Coach didn't like it. He called a timeout. Here early in the first quarter. So fourth down and four, John. Obviously, if you're Danny Solomon, they've been able to run behind that left guard. You think they're going to go right back there and try to pick it up? They're going to do that a lot today, Tim. They're going to lean on fair. Danny's going to lean on fair all day long to keep the ball in his hands to, to limit, eliminate the turnovers and try to throw some high percentage passes. He told me himself that the advent and the introduction of having uh, flag football in the league has helped this passing game out tremendously. And they proved that during the spring. But you also look at in the first quarter, Garden Valley, they don't score much in the first quarter where the Collinwood Cobras, they scored 66 points in the first quarter. So it's important that Garden Valley gets, get a score here in the first quarter because uh, Collinwood Cobras has proved that they will take it right down the field. 66 points. That's a lot of points. It's the most points they score in the quarter all year long. And the uh, Garden Valley Falcons have a history during the year when they get into those fourth down in less than five, they do try to draw them off. But the Collinwood Cobras would not have it today. They were prepared for that. So here they come up, the Garden Valley Falcons. Again, their, their strength is their defense, but the offense has played well here in the last couple weeks in the playoffs and that's why they're sitting where they're at today in the championship game and folks we want to remind you that when we're done with this game stay tuned because right after this we'll be having the Bantamweight championship game between the Glenville Elite Panthers and the Maple Heights Saints that's going to be a good one Tim oh man everybody's talking about the the ability, the size, the athleticism, and the, just, the, just the overall IQ of the players at that age is tremendous. It's going to be a very good game. So now we got a delay, and I'm trying to find out what's going on here. Uh, they got a problem with one of these. So why we have this delay, we'd like to tell you about some free recreation programs that are taking place right now in all the recreation centers. Again, one of the best kept secrets in town is if your child goes to school, we have after school meals at all Cleveland Recreation Centers. Again, all they have to do is be a student in school. You can go to your local rec centers. They usually serve those meals anywhere between 345, 4 o'clock to about 530. You can check with your local rec center. If you're not sure and you need more information on the 
lunch program, you can pick up the phone right now and call 664-2570. That's 664-2570. No, Tim, the delay and, and play right here is really in favor of the Garden Valley Falcons. They got the ball, they're driving. Uh, they're playing against the number two defense in this division. And again, Danny knows how important it is to score early on this team because they have a very explosive offense and he's got to get on the board. This is a fourth down play that he's got to get the first down. Looks like Fair is not in the backfield right now. Uh-oh, got to stay on his feet. He got a hold, he got through it, made a man miss. Good job. Great call by Danny Solomon. I'm sure they were looking left, but they came right across. Yeah, he went with a different look, Tim. And he stumbled right out of the block, but he was able to keep his feet and get upfield, got an excellent block right there before the defender for the Cobra was able to take him down. You see that wide receiver get a block on the outside. And Valentine knew exactly what to do with it. Take it right up in the hole. Again, it was Sirius Jones, the linebacker on the stop. Fairs, fair back at quarterback. First and 10. We're on the 32. That little jet sweep. Try to get outside. Nothing doing. They're there. Ooh. He's down. He's down. And Joseph Effort, the outline backer, as well as number 95. For the Collinwood Cobras. It's a big loss. Yeah, right Samaj there. Number Ellison. Yeah, number four for the Garden Valley Falcons. Rashawn Duncan's got to get a hat on somebody. Wasn't able to do it. Left his, left his man hanging there a little bit. So the defense was able to come up and make a play. You don't want to give it. You don't want to give this defense any momentum. Got to keep going down the field. Fair probably keep the ball on this one. And right up, he'll pick up a couple yards, but that's about all. It'll be third down and about 14. But they've been able to control the clock and keep the clock moving. I'm sure that's what exactly Danny's hoping for. If we can hold on the ball and keep the drives going, it keeps us out of the Collinwood offense. That's exactly what he's thinking, but he's got to get in the end zone. This will be another play that Fair probably will hold on to the football, spreading them out with trips on the right. He's throwing. Great attempt. Great effort by number five right there, Valentine. They tried to hit that earlier in the game, John. The guy was open. We just didn't get him a good pass. Right. So fourth down in about 14. They're on their the Collinwood Cobra's 38 yard line going in. Yeah. Fair's got to got to get his head up and get his body language there better. And no, he didn't connect on that play, but he's got to get back into the he got to get back into uh, his drop, get his feet set, and he's got to deliver a good ball. So they went with the automatic punt rule. So they're moving the ball up. They'll turn it over on downs. And the Collinwood Cobras will take off, uh, take over. And this is a good uh, advantage to the Falcons on defense. If they can keep them down here and do a three and out, that will really help them out. But with Joseph Efer, that quarterback, uh, Sirius Jones at running back. Number one offense in the league, averaging 29 points per game. Yep. And you know why that is. It's because of Chavelle Johnson, Samaj Ellison, Jacob Doss, Christopher Lucius, and Stephen Hall Jr. Those guys work hard for Jones and Eford.
Let's see if he goes with Jones right away. Or try to use him as a distraction. Got a delay in the game. First down, ten at quarterback effort. It's a tight formation. Offside on the defense. Somebody lined up in the neutral zone. We have an offside penalty on the defense. You don't want to get his Cobra offense anything. They're explosive enough without the penalties. Sean Fed, Dylan Clay, Tavelle Steele Jr., and Jamarian Chambers met him right there in the hole. Ooh. All four of them. And Jaquez Guest, that was the guy we talked about in the beginning. He's a hitter. Some good hitting. Loves, uh, he loves one of his things he loves to do is boxing, and we can see that today. Mm -hmm. And That's he wants to be an that. NFL player, John. Hey, go for it. He's off to a good start. Got his team in the championship game. Second down, we'll call it six. This defense is really trying to set the tone. Yeah. They are really trying to set the tone. The defensive line is, is getting the best of that offensive line of the Collinwood Cobras. Sean Fair on the tackle. Third down, we'll call it five. Be looking at something to the outside here. You know, and the thing is, when you look at the scoring from the Cobras, they always seem to hit that big play, the big running play. They got, they get through that line and break it. They, they got some speed, so that's something we got to keep an eye on. Yeah, Romel Phillips, Ronnie Taylor, Joseph Eford, and Sirius Jones. That is a lot of talent back there. Pass. Throwing it. He caught it. Great concentration by that young man right there. Great pass play. He threw it out there in 21, Ronnie Taylor Jr. That's why you're looking at the number one scorer in the in the league with 60 points. He had seven touchdowns rushing during the regular season. And this is just confidence in your receiver, Tim, knowing that he's going to make the adjustments and make the catch. And that's exactly what he does. The Garden Valley defenders did not play the ball as well as they should have. They had a fair shot at it as well. And he didn't even have to jump for that ball. So good job right there by Ronnie Taylor. Garden Valley, two great plays on defense and a let down down the field and let's see if they can stop him right here. Going wide. Ooh. Ooh. Wow. Ouch. There's some hitting going on out there. He ain't hit nothing on this one. A great tackle. And that'll bring us to the end of the first quarter. We are scoreless here at Collinwood. So let me bring Carl Brown in here. Carl, in the, in the first quarter, there was a one time they called an offside on the defense. And um, what do the officials at this age level, will they talk to them afterwards and remind them, hey, make sure you're behind the ball, or do they just make that call? How do they handle yes. that situation? Tim, constantly um, the line officials are 
telling the kids to uh, to get back and be mindful of that line of scrimmage. Because so, obviously, you as officials, uh, you hear it all the time. The officials would love to go out to the game, have them call a game, and never be noticed. And here's a way where you can like kind of avoid that when you're hey, telling them ahead of time. Right now, if they right keep right doing it, there's not much you can do. They're right off, they're right off. Here. But yeah. that's one of the things that sometimes officials never get credit for, where they try to help the younger kids at the younger level with the fundamentals and not doing the silly penalties. Absolutely. You know, we always try to employ um, preventive officiating, Tim. And the game in which we're invisible is the, uh, the best game we'll ever call. I tell my crew, it was a game where you don't have to uh, pull the trigger on your flag. You know, that's the best game you'll ever call. So here we are. We're going to be starting the second quarter. And, John, when we talked to Danny Solomon, what was his biggest concern going into the game? Silly penalties and losing focus. And he wanted to make sure that team play was always in effect. And it looked like on that first deep, on the first drive, the team play was executing. They were, the offense was executing. They were getting the ball upfield. And they had stalled down in, in, uh, in Cobra territory. But on defense, they picked it up. They've been hitting. They only had one bad play on defense where they got the big play to uh, Ronnie Taylor. And uh, this is uh, perfect for the Garden Valley Falcons. They kept the ball, and they didn't let the Cobras score. Now, on the other side, you got the Cobras. They're playing from behind. They're not playing from behind, but he wants to keep his team positive because they're used to being up. They're used to being ahead. If Danny Solomon and his Garden Valley Falcons can get on the board, he can put some doubt into this Cobras team. But right now, the Cobras know that they can make big plays, and they're going to rely on those big plays. So we'll see how the second half, second quarter goes. All right, second down and nine. Start of the second quarter, no score. And here we go. That silly penalty, talking about jumping offside, not watching the ball. Mm-hmm. No excuse for that. You're supposed to watch the football. Defense should never jump offside. You don't move until the ball moves. That's absolutely correct, John. So second down and five. Good catch. They got it into Sirius Jones's hands. And he'll pick up about 14 yards and a first down. Yeah, just a little pitch and catch right here. Get off of some uh, some confidence. A reverse rollout effort with the left hand. Throws it out to Jones. Makes the easy catch and gets positive yards. And that's the first time we've called that cornerback's name to Sean Atkins on the tackle. It's a good tackle. He was. I'll tell you what, I can see why Garden Valley has one of the top rated defenses. They don't miss many tackles, John. No, they don't. And they lay the wood. You know, we, we talked about it in the, the keys to the game, the players to look out for. They had big hitter behind almost all of them. Smart, intelligent, and that's the way they're playing today. Couple offsides, but if they can stop that, they'll be uh, they'll be fine. They got to stop this offense right here, though. First down and ten. They're gonna run right behind the left guard, and he'll get hit by a whole host of the Garden Valley Falcons. Yeah, they put Taylor in the backfield on this one, hoping that they could pop him free and get him into space so he can make a move and take it to the house. But Garden Valley Falcons had a, a different idea. Second down and eight. Sean Fair, marking Payne coming up and making the tackle. So Collinwood Cobras have tried to stay on the ground and move the football. They've thrown it one time, and it was a big play. So we know they can do both. This looks like a pass play here, Tim. Trips at the bottom. There it is. 
A little slip screen. Garden Valley reacts right away. Nothing doing, good coverage. Third down. Nine. And on the tackle. Jamarian Chambers. Yeah, they tried to get the ball again in one of the playmakers' hands. Jones's hands, but mm -hmm. nothing there. Well scouted, well played, good discipline. And the Falcons, all right, got the uh, offense of uh, the Cobras right where they want them. Third and long. So third down, we'll call it eight. Second quarter, five minutes to go in the ball in the half. It's the Pee Wee Championship game. The Collinwood Cobras are in the white and blue. Looks no like this score. is confusing, Tim. I thought so. And they're going to call a timeout. Yeah, they were confused from the beginning in the huddle. So there's one timeout for each team. No. So obviously, uh, John, when we talk about fall, we always talk about holidays, Christmas time. No better time to talk about what comes up next in the Cleveland Recreation Program, and it's hoop time hoop in all time. Cleveland Recreation Centers. Yes, they bring sir. the round ball out, and here we go to the basketball. Again, it's for all ages, starting from a peewee program of five years old all the way up through 17. Again, boys and girls. Again, the girls have a travel program that starts in January, but this is the time now to contact your local recreation centers. Again, the travel teams will be provided with full uniforms, transportation, coaching, and the boys are playing in their leagues right there at the center. They'll form their teams and they'll be part of March Madness 2020. So when football's over, head to your local rec centers. It's all free to you, the citizens of Cleveland. Yeah, get up off that couch and get active, meet some new friends, and put the remote controls down to those video games and get some exercise, kids. Yes, sir. Third down and eight. Thank you twice. What up? Oh, great play. Great defense. By the Garden Valley Falcons. John, they were there. Yeah, they were there. They knew exactly what was coming up, and they were ready for it. Yeah, it was a good job right there by Matthew Valentine. One of the better athletes on this team. Doing an excellent job of reading that pass. So Matthew Valentine with the interception. And you look at it right here. Yeah, number eight right there for it's a catch for the Cobras. Couldn't make a play on it. Not as tall, not as athletic as Taylor, but they tried to hit him long. But a good job right there by number five. Matthew Valentine, the All-Star. That's the reason why he's an All-Star. So the first turnover goes to Garden Valley, creating a turnover, and getting the ball back. It'll be first down and 10 on their 20. And the Cobras will play the defense. Other than the penalties, the ball game is going in Garden Valley's way. They just have to eliminate the penalties and, and keep executing. Before the snap, ball start, offense, number two, five yard penalty. Repeat the down, first down. You know, they stay in the pistol, which really I was talking to some of our guys in the office and I said, give me some more details with this pistol thing. You know, I used to remember the guy gets and he's running from there, but they say the quarterback's a lot closer to the, the center and they can do things more real quick system, like right there. Yeah. Now yeah. you got another flag on the play. The pass is complete to number four, Rayshon Duncan. Rayshon Duncan, and he's tackled by number 21, Ronnie Taylor. Yeah, Rayshon Duncan showing a little frustration right there. But uh, there's nothing to be frustrated about. He just got uh, walked down by a, a, a great athlete. And uh, Mr. Taylor, he's all over the place, as you see him right there. 
So we have one of our first penalties of the game with the holding. And again, uh, one of the things Danny told me about his quarterback, he said, Tim, he, when I call something and it's not the right formation, that he's smart enough to know we got the wrong thing. He's been a quarterback for three years in the league. During the play, holding offense. That penalty is refused. Second down. So they declined the penalty. Obviously, second down. They got about 20 yards to go here. So, you know, that speaks volume to uh, Coach Solomon and his uh, coaching techniques that a player can go to him and, and tell him that what he sees is not there or it is there. Open relationship. Here they are trying to get to the outside. Picks up maybe two yards, if that. We'll give him one. It'll be third down and 19. Yeah, Fair tries to take this off the right side, but unfortunately, uh, didn't have enough hats over there to put on bodies. But a good tackle right there by the defense. Yeah, that was Joseph Effort, the outside linebacker. As you can see him right there, number 14, also the quarterback. We've been talking about him all day. Yeah, he's a good player. Surprised he did not make the all-star team. He's contributed heavily to the success of this 19 season for the Collinwood Cobras. He led the league in touchdown passes. See, they changing the play right now. Fair looking over at Coach Solomon. Keep, keep, keep. He called the play. Right up the middle. He saw something up the middle. Nothing doing. You got to believe they're going to punt here. Yeah, good job by that interior linebacking crew right there, number 16. So fourth down. Defense, defense. It's a good job right there. So it's a quarterback draw. And number 18, you see right there, and 21, Taylor again on the Taylor, on the, on the tackle. So Carl Brown, give us uh, your thoughts with the officials. Here we got a game 0-0. We're about three minutes before the half. Very few penalties. And you as officials are probably saying, just keep this going. I love it. <laughs> True? Well, Tim, my whole thing is, uh, and this is a very well-officiated game, um, we generally like to just keep it moving. If the, the least penalties we can throw, the better. You know, because uh, we're not out there looking to throw flags. We're just looking to uh, keep the game moving. Well, it's moving. 312 left to go in the first half. Hallelujah. So first down and 10, oh, Collinwood in their own, uh, Garden Valley territory at the 40-yard line with 3.12 to go here in the quarter. I'm going to run right behind that guard wow. and use that head on wow. right away. We will have forward progress there. This is an excellent, excellent, excellent play. This is all what we like to call blood, guts, and attitude. Right there, he sees Jones coming up the hole. Yeah. He takes on 95, collapses him, and drives him back. Wait for the rest of the crew to get there. That's Excellent right. play. Excellent play. He wasn't going to be denied. That's Dylan Clay on the tackle. Yeah, him and Keon Johnson, just an excellent job. Man, tough. they has got a tough line. They said win the line of scrimmage. They're doing it. They are doing it. Second down, 14. No misdirection. Boom. Nothing doing. It's a five yard pass. Well, right now, John, if we're looking at this game and you look at the line of scrimmage, you almost have to give the edge to the Garden Valley Falcons. Yeah, they, they, they've come to play today, Tim, especially this defense, knowing they're going up against a high-powered offense of the Cobras. Again, Mark K. Payne, excellent one-on-one -on -one tackle. Ohio College Prep School, fifth grader, 11 years old. Loves soccer and basketball. 
Baker Mayfield is his favorite player. He wants to be an NFL player. And uh, if he keeps playing like that, he will definitely reach his goal. There's some confusion on this play on the formation. Right, third down. So that doesn't bode well for success. And 20. It's a delay a game. Delay a game. Offense, number 14. Five yard penalty. Repeat the down. Mm. Mm -mm. Ralph King with his signature penalty flag to the clouds. Some days I wish it would stay up in the clouds. <laughs> Stop it. <laughs> hey, that's my boy. I trained him. <laughs> Ralph takes the job seriously. Yeah, he does a good job. That he, he does. does. a good job. That he does. All right. Copers need a big play. Third down, we'll call it about 20. Slide. And there ain't nothing Whoa. going on now. Slow yeah. developer. Too That's slow. Serious. What's that uh, phase that they always talk about, John, in football? You have to be able to run the football to win in this game. You sure do. Both of these teams qualify to be a champion when you look at their defenses. But man, you see that tackling? Wow. Wow. That trying door, to find out who made the closed. tackle. Kalen Bailey, Dylan Clay. Yeah, number two. Yeah, Kalen Bailey got so much penetration that he pushed the tackle back into the path of the running back. And that's exactly what you want to do in order to hold up and wait for the rest of the crowd to get there. I tell you, this is going just the way Coach Solomon wants it to go. Zero, zero. Hey. So... There's 48 seconds to go in the half, and right after the half, we will be talking to the head coach of the Garden Valley Falcons, Danny Solomon. He's got to be feeling pretty good about that defense. He's just got to try to pop fair or guess, try to get Rashawn Duncan in the, in, in, in the game or one of his uh, top secret guys that nobody knows about. So only a couple yards. Question, will Danny try to get one more playoff here? You got to believe he's going to throw if he's going to run a play. Yeah, that was Kalen Bailey left tight end on the carry. Second down. We're going to call it eight. There's the throw. He's going to look to throw. He's throwing it out there. And he was open on the sideline, but he just threw it out of bounds. Yeah, that he didn't pressure. have enough time to, he didn't, yeah, pressure, exactly. Didn't have enough time to set his feet and get a good throw off to him. But that was a good catch, though. And try to tippy toe that sideline right there for the wide receiver. I tell you, it'd be interesting to see. You know, I'm looking at Collinwood, and the, the stack crews inform me their offense has a total of 12 yards rushing wow. in the first half. Wow. But you got to give credit to the Garden Valley defense. You know, you they've been in position. They've made the tackles. They played solid defense here. Yes, they have. They got good penetration on that defensive line and disrupted the blocking scheme for the Cobras. <laughs> Keep it on the ground. So that play is going to end the first half. And uh, we are scoreless here at Collinwood Field. Again, John Good with Tim Wells and Carl Brown. Again, the Garden Valley Falcons and the Collinwood Cobras in a defensive battle. And momentarily, we'll be talking to the head coach of the Garden Valley Falcons. And again, it is a, uh, it has really been a tremendous display of fundamental defense, fundamentals, 
few few penalties they probably wouldn't want, John, but yeah. obviously uh, with kids, you're going to have a few of those. Uh, right now, we're going to go down to the field. Danny, can you hear us? Yeah. Yes, I can. First of all, uh, congratulations for your team getting here today. And uh, John's going to ask you a couple questions, but obviously, uh, you got to feel great about your defense. I've never seen a group that tackles so well, stays in position, and they have just been outstanding. So again, uh, tell us a little bit about your defense. Okay, our defense has been been um, our strength all season long. Uh, we only got we only got. I'm oh, sorry. I thought they were, I thought that was me on the on the microphone. Sorry, Tim. Okay, so our defense has been our strength all season long. In the regular season, out of the six games, we had five shutouts. Only one team scored on us uh, in the regular season. So far in the playoff, we've had two shutouts out of the three games. So defense has been solid for us all season long. And then, and again, Tanny, they're solid here today. Excellent job of scouting this this uh, Collinwood Cobra team. Your keys to the game was to win the line of scrimmage. The pistol team have good snaps and limit the turnovers. Don't have silly penalties and don't lose focus. You've been a step away from breaking fair and trying to get others into the into the into the flow of the uh, offensive game plan. Uh, what are you looking at doing in the second half to break somebody loose? Okay, we're gonna keep doing much of the same. I, I agree with you. We're actually doing pretty good at the line of scrimmage. Uh, where we're falling short a little bit is on the edge. Uh, my receivers got to do a better job of blocking and holding those blocks at the second level, and I think we'll be able to pop one in the second half. I agree with you. Good luck in the second half, Danny. Thank you, John. Yep. Danny Solomon, the head coach of the Garden Valley Falcons. Folks, we'll be right back right after this as we'll have the second half st stats, and we will talk to the head coach of the Collinwood Cobras, Mr. Morgan. Hi, I'm Mayor Frank Jackson. You've probably seen media coverage of the growing opioid epidemic in Northeastern Ohio. But what you might not know is how many of these tragedies begin with a seemingly innocent prescription for pain medication. That is why we're teaming with the Cuyahoga County Opiate Marketing Task Force to encourage you to know the risk. Go to the website on your screen to learn which pills are opiates, and alternative ways of dealing with pain, which starts as a prescription can end with addiction, so no to risk. Need food? We can help. The Greater Cleveland Food Bank's Benefits Outreach Department works within the community to help individuals locate food and apply for SNAP and other public benefits. Weekdays, our help center accepts phone calls from 7 a.m. to 6 p.m. and walk-ins from 8 a.m. to 5 p.m. Call 216-738-2067 or stop in our facility at 15500 South Waterloo Road. Our benefits outreach counselors are out in the community every day assisting with benefit enrollment and connecting the community to vital resources. Keep your eye out for our food truck, providing free, fresh produce and SNAP enrollment in the community. For more information, visit www.greatercleveland-foodbank.org slash get help. Welcome back to Collinwood Field, where we are scoreless in the Pee Wee Championship game between the Collinwood Cobras and the Garden Valley Falcons and our very special guest, our main sponsor that has made a huge impact in the 2019 season with Cleveland Muni football. Obviously, Karen Butler, Neon, I remember Karen Butler from the city. City of Cleveland, right. right. But <laughs> health and everything has been always one of the yes. big things with you. Let's talk a little bit about NEON and what was done this year. Well, great. So we partnered with the Muni League, and we thought it was such an important thing to do, to focus upon the health of the kids, making sure that they have access to comprehensive services, and making sure that they're safe and healthy when they're playing. So we were able to provide the physical examinations that the children needed in order to play. So it was a great partnership and a great way to connect with the Muni League. And obviously, you're talking about how many kids we have in our league and we're trying to get them to go and get their physicals yes. and some parents can't afford it and they run into those issues. 
But the other part of this is when I'm hearing neon, I'm hearing it's more than just the physical part. Yes. You want to, you're looking at the whole child and saying, hey, here's where we can help and things that we can do. Yes. And there's several locations that you have throughout the city in uh, Cleveland, Ohio. Can we talk a little bit about those locations? Yes. So NEON has seven locations throughout Greater Cleveland. And because of that, it makes us one of the largest uh, federally qualified health centers or community health center networks in the entire Greater Cleveland area. And they're located in the neighborhoods. And that's very important because we want to be accessible. So we want to make sure that there are no transportation barriers, that uh, cost is not an issue. And we are really about making sure that our children are healthy, that our families are healthy, and that our neighborhoods are healthy. And, and how did it go the first year with the kids coming through? Yeah, it was great. It was great. Um, parents often brought them in. Sometimes the coaches brought the kids in, and our providers were eager to make sure that they got taken care of. They probably wanted to talk football the whole time they were in Probably there. so, because they're <laughs> excited about it. I mean, and it's great to see the excitement at the game here today. So glad to be a part of this. Well, Karen, one of, th one of the things we want to say is thank you so much. Pl you guys pleasure. have really made a difference. And um, there was a story that we saw in the media years, months ago, about where uh, it wasn't in our city. It was another city where kids didn't get a physical. Yes. And all I kept thinking about, oh, my God, what had happened? This kid had a precondition. We didn't catch it. They didn't know about it. And every time I hear the word neon, I go, I just breathe like, thank you, Jesus. <laughs> Hallelujah. Yeah. And that's so, so very important because we need to know um, and, and be able to establish a baseline for the kids so that we know if there's something different or if there are any pre-existing conditions. And we're here to take care of that. We um, base our treatment model on prevention. We want to make sure that um, all of the services that they need in order to prevent various types of illnesses are provided for them and made available to them. Well, first of all, as you can see, folks, NEON, again, they are a big sponsor of Cleveland Mini Football. We appreciate everything you've done for this season. We look forward to future and even doing more. Thank you so much. It's our honor to be a part of this wonderful initiative. Thank you, Karen. Thank you. Karen Butler from NEON coming by Conlewood Field. And, uh, Right now, we are going to try to get the coach. We probably lost him, but that's okay. And we'll be right back with the start of the second half right here from Conway. Until all our daughters are safe. Until all our children have families until all our families have homes, until all our parents are cared for. We'll be here. All right, we are back at Collinwood Field for the start of the second half, John Good. Tim Wells in the house, and John, when you look at the stats in the first half, it definitely indicates a lot of defense. Yeah, it sure does, Tim, but the, you start off with the Collinwood Cobras, only uh, 32 yards passing, 12 yards rushing, definitely, definitely, definitely against their MO, and they turned the ball over once as well. Garden Valley, 42 yards rushing, no passing yards, so again, Going just going just the, the way that the Garden Valley Falcons wanted to go, keeping this Cobra offense in check. Well, I think this game now, John, is going to be determined on a who can break the one big play. Just who can break the one big play? Yeah, these teams are doing a good job of not letting the, those uh, explosive players get to the second level, though, Tim. They're shutting them down earlier at the line of scrimmage. There's a pass. Too far. So it'll be third down and nine. Again, we're just underway here in the third quarter. No score. And I know we're still two quarters away. But partner, 
if this continues like we had in the first half <laughs> and we don't get someone to break one, get the overtime rule ready, Carl. Oh, no. <laughs> <laughs> the one thing that the coaches have got to, got to do with their coaching philosophies, they got to stop and keep in control of the urge to try to make a big play, to make a big strike. They've got to stick with their game plans, you know, stick with their plays for their down and distances and trust their offense and defensive line to make plays. Oh, pressure, got it away. Sirius Jones on the catch. They're trying to get it outside, see if they can get by somebody. Both teams are. But those cornerbacks and the outside defense has been good for both teams. Yeah, here you can see right here, there's pressure right up the middle. Not a good job of that offensive line. Great job for, he from, got it uh, off. Efer for getting it off and hitting his target. I don't think he made it back to the line of scrimmage. So they'll turn the ball over on downs. And Garden Valley will start off with pretty good field position. So they'll go to the automatic punt roll. And John, on the automatic punt roll, they take those, uh, what is it, 15 seconds off the clock? 15 seconds off the clock, that's right. And the ball will be placed down. This rule has worked out well for us in Muni football, eliminating uh, injuries and helping the game move along a lot better. So, Carl, I'm going to give you a question now, and you can think about it, and then you can come in with an answer. Obviously, I know when you guys officiate, everybody in the stands thinks they're a better referee 40 feet away. And uh, they say, well, how do I become a referee? What, what do I do? Because, you know, a lot of times we turn them and say, well, why don't you come out here and try to do this? How do they become a football official if they're interested? Well, you know what, Tim? Usually uh, when I get a whole lot of... Um commentary from fans I always keep a couple extra shirts in my uh, in my <laughs> football bag and I offer them to come on out I tell them I got a size that will fit you and you're welcome to come get in the skillet all right, and, and saute around but if they really were serious they could just go to um, the Ohio High School Athletic Association website and um, once you tap into that, there's an area on there about becoming an official. There's areas in the, um, or individuals in the area that teach the class. And once they have taken the class and uh, obviously passed the test, then they would become a class two official. And uh, we would, you know, mail them into the, uh, into the skillet. <laughs> I like that. Which word is between the lines. Huh? Yeah. Yes, indeed. <laughs> it's a big skillet. It is. <laughs> it's hot, too. Yes, it is. There you go. There you go. You got it. You got, it. You got the first down and some. Nice. Here's that offense. Third belly, a nice run and a first down. First down and 10, 450 to go. Yeah, you can see Garden Valley's uh, philosophy now to come out of here, give fair to football, and let him pick his holes and tell that offensive line to just stay on a cobra and keep your feet moving until you hear that whistle blow because that's exactly what they did on this play. Yes, sir. He's a tough load to bring down, as you see. Number seven right there going for a little bit of a ride for the Cobra's defense. Well, he's had three touchdowns running the ball in the playoffs through two touchdown passes. Yep, and there's that thing, there, there's that uh, thing that uh, Danny was scared of is a bad snap. Mm -hmm. the quarterback had to reach for it through the timing off. And you can see number 25 knife in there and, and make the play. Number 28, I'm sorry. That was Chevelle Johnson, the right defensive end. Chevelle Johnson got some pretty nice size. No doubt. And he's fast. He can he can move right there. He sees he saw the ball too high and uh, closed in on that outside right there. Leverage. The big boy. Yes, he is. He's gonna need to make some plays. Second down and two. This could be the one. Johnny's on the outside. Cuts back through the middle. 
They're going to bring him down on the 29-yard line, and it's a first down for the Garden Valley Falcons. Yeah, Matthew Valentine doing an excellent job of following his blockers and picking his picking his holes. He's got great vision, Tim. See here, he takes the ball, goes around the left side. He had to hit that hole. Saw the man a great block right there by his teammate. He cuts back. And the thing that you'll notice, John, is what Danny talked about at halftime. We've got to get those the guys on the outside to block, maintain those blocks, and they got it on that play. They sure did. Second down. He'll pick up about three. It'll be second down and seven. Three minutes to go in the third quarter. Ferris keeping him honest with that inside run. Trying to get to that second level. If he pops one, he can get there too. Christopher Lucius from Kenneth Clement on the tackle. It's amazing how big Fair has gotten over the years too, Tim. He has really, he has really bulked up. Whoa. Through the middle and he put his head down. And he used some of that bulk right there. This is like uh, a game of wills, you know. I want to, I'm determined to get through there. It's a championship game, Tim. These teams have been sweating and fighting since June to get to this point. This is when you bring your best. The Cobras are known for peaking at the end of the season, right when the coaching staff want them to peak, they breeze through the playoffs. And now they're here fighting a Garden Valley team that's desperate for a championship. They've been close so many years that uh, Coach Solomon can taste it. He knows he's got the talent. All he has to do is keep these guys together mentally because physically they can play with anybody. Third and one, that's all they need. And oh, he's going to pick it up. Goodness. First great, down, great Garden effort. Valley. Great effort there. Fear is just a big play guy, Tim. Right here, he trips over his own man a little bit. Right there, 12 missed him. Mm -hmm. And that was the big play right there. They didn't really the need play. it. That so, was Stephen Hall Jr. First down and 10. You got to make that tackle. High snap. To the outside, nothing doing. Now, you look at that play, and I hope they give it to us on a replay. Count how many Garden Valley guys are standing up there. They're not blocking compared to the one where they had the big game. Yeah, number 13 took a shot, too, from the running back. Get the ball up high. They were catching Corral with one hand right here. Boom. He had some. See everybody standing there? Yeah. Nobody's everybody. blocking. Mm -hmm. Coach Danny talked about it. They got a block on those outside runs. 40 seconds in running. We're in the third quarter. We're still scoreless. But the Garden Valley Falcons with a second down and seven. They're driving. This is their best field position. They're on the 14 yard line. Oh. And they did a silly penalty again. That'll do it to you. No, it's okay. You got to keep his, keep his head, keep the guy's heads calm. That was Brandon Morgan on that last play that took that hit. Hope he's okay. He looked a little. A little woozy, but I'm pretty sure he's all right. He hasn't left the field. So you he notice snap. that he calls time timeout. Offense, number 13. Right Five after this because of the, the play. Down. I'm Second sure down. He's, what's he telling him, John, when he goes into this huddle? On the Cobra side? On the Garden Valley side. On the, go, uh, on, the, on the Garden Valley side, he's telling them that they got to stick with their blocks. They got holes. You can hear them. Right here. We can hear him. Tell him to keep their poise. That's where your leadership comes in. Leadership, that's right. You gotta be more encouraging, man. I've been begging you. Be more encouraging. Don't call nobody's name out. We done jumped off that fake 50 times today. Okay, get the water out, y'all. We're out. Oh, Solomon. What's the story on Danny Solomon when you talk about him as a coach? Danny's been around for a while. Oh, my Lord. When you think about Danny Solomon, there's not that many that have done what he is. Again, he is a uh, 26 years. Coach's fourth championship game appearance. 
Graduated from Aviation High School. Played a little baseball back then in 1989 yeah. under Ike Rose. He talks about him being a role model. But to, to go, he, he said that's one area of the city that he knows there's a need. Mm -hmm. And he's, he's had a chance to go and coach high school and everything else. And he said, no, I'm going to fulfill that need in that community. And he does an excellent job of it, too. Oh, he's phenomenal. They got to love him to death. Good defense to tackle right there by number five. I thought I saw a little linen go on the field. Yeah. <laughs> Sirius Jones on the tackle. Is that what they call that, linen? Yeah, a little laundry. A little laundry. Well, this is hurting them because they're hurting themselves. They were down on the 14. Illegal formation. The 24. Offense. Six men on the line of scrimmage. Repeat the down. Mm. Second down. Again, this is where he's talking about leadership and keeping your head and just executing your assignment. Do your job. That's it. Just do your job. But again, legal formation right there. You can see just one man on the line of scrimmage. The other two are back. They need another guy on the line of scrimmage. Again, we want to remind you folks that at the end, we'll have an outstanding player, offense and defense. I'm sure we got plenty of defensive candidates. See if you can match them. Also, following this game, we'll have the Bantamweight Championship game. Ball back, came through the middle. Good fair. Wow. Make tackles. All the way down to the 11 yard line. They got caught looking outside, and nobody kept an eye on the quarterback. Yeah, they sure did. Danny knew that they were going man to man, and he's just holding the ball up like he's going to throw it and run at the same time. They're not wrapping up. Fair, fair. He doesn't stop his feet from moving. He's always going forward. You notice Tim. Every time he falls, he falls forward. He never falls back. Well, obviously, Jen, we talked about the the coaches. But we need to talk about the Collinwood coach as well. And uh, Mr. Morgan, uh, tell us a little bit about him. Yeah, David Morgan, a 2001 graduate of New London High School in Connecticut. Uh, also went to Collinwood, attended Collinwood High School, played football, so he's got some playing experience. This is his eighth year coaching, first as a head coach. And uh, what he remembers most is he pushes his kids to be great on and off the field. A young organization that last year, when the first year they came into uh, Muni football, uh, Mr. Morgan and his staff and the rest of the coaches in the other divisions, all they wanted to do was see improvement. They just wanted to keep the kids around, keep, keep them coming back. Uh, they have them year round. They do baseball, they do basketball, and just start developing character. And as you can see, the plan Seem to have been accelerated in just one year with them attending, uh, making it to this championship game, and along with two other uh, teams. So they've uh, accomplished their goals pretty quickly. Now the trick is going to be to sustain it. So they got some great examples in the organization, and it's a it's a pleasure to have them a part of the Muni family. You know, the one thing you always hear from folks is, "Hey, you know, it's a football." No, it isn't. And if you talk about it, John, you think about registration. When they, when they turn in those contracts, they're also to required to return in that report card, too. That's right. That's right. So education and tutoring and getting all that and taking care of the child with all those issues is now part of Muni football. Yeah, and it's, a, and it's the most important part, too, Tim, because we know uh, those, these kids will spend more time off the field doing things positive in this world and in life than they will be playing football. It's fair again. He's got a hole. So again, he's signaling. First down. First down. So it's first and goal. We'll see if the, we'll see if the Falcons can smell blood and get into that end zone. This is the best opportunity they've had all game long. And I'm sure Coach Solomon has delivered the message. He wants that ball in the end zone. 
So here we go. First down and goal. We're on the seven. And tight. He's not going to take any chances. He's going to keep it with fair. And he's in. Touchdown, Garden Valley. Wow. They played it safe. Ran fair five straight times. And he's used to being in the end zone. Well, they needed that little bit of blocking in a hole, and that's exactly what they gave them, John. Yeah, exactly right, Tim. Here at the beginning of the fourth quarter, to get on the scoreboard right now is key. Now, like Coach Solomon said, it's up to his defense, but this, this extra point is huge. They've been successful six times with the run. They're going to try to run it here again. He's pushing, he's pushing, he's pushing. He's, he's in! Yeah. That was on the heart and the legs of LeVon wow. Fair. In. Just to everything. LeSean Fair would not be denied. They're up in the, their seats and they smell we got one in, in the books. Yeah, good job right here, Fair Secure. Again, a good snap. Can't underscore that. Kept his feet moving, always falling forward. That's right. Follow always you. falling forward. Like to see him run the ball a little bit lower, but he's such a, a, a big kid, and he's got some stout to him that uh, he just keeps his legs moving and leans into people and goes forward. And John, just for the sake, when we look at the scoring comparisons in the the fourth quarter with the teams, and you can see in the playoffs alone, Garden Valley, that's been their biggest scoring quarter. Yes. And the Collinwood Cobra's offense has not done well in the fourth quarter. Yes, they Usually they're, they're, you know, they're a, you look at them, they're early in the ball game, so they're mm -hmm. going to struggle a little bit here. And that's all attitude. And you saw Danny in the in the huddle, Coach Solomon in the huddle telling his kids about leadership and concentration and not doing the silly, silly little things. We'll see if the Cobras can answer right here. First down and 10. He dropped the ball. Was... That's no good. Yeah, a little bit of a, a different look right there. I believe Jones was at the quarterback and he was handing it off to, he was handing it off to Efert. So second down, we got a loss of about three yards on the first play. Still plenty of time, 6.40 to go here in the ball game. Yeah, it's plenty of time, but this is the drive of the game for the Cobras. The way the Falcons are controlling the ball, they probably won't have the opportunity. Oh! He ran wow. it down! Wow. Gonna have some blocking. Wow. Jamarian Chambers. Wow. Jamarian Chambers here again, smelling blood, number 28. Not doing block. a very good job of holding him out. Chevelle Johnson got to give his quarterback time. Let uh, let Chambers run right around him. Chambers got speed, able to hawk him down. Timeout on the field. Where Jamarian Chambers, the sixth grader from Bolton Elementary, comes up with a huge sack. And you know what, John, you look at his favorite team, favorite player, and what he wants to be, it surely matches up. Yes, it does. I don't know where you get Buccaneers from as his favorite team, <laughs> but O'Day Beckham Jr., he must be, uh, he must visit Florida, Tampa. Sometimes during the year, I guess, you know, no doubt. Yeah, but that's all right. Because Jamarion Chambers has been playing a heck of a game this entire afternoon. He and that entire defensive line, uh, Tavelle Steele Jr., uh, Dylan Clay, LaShawn Fair, with, with, with Rashawn Duncan coming up and making play, Dyshawn Atkins, and those linebackers, Valentine, 
Bailey, Guest, and Payne. They've been doing a heck of a job keeping this high explosive offense in check. I mean, they, they haven't scored a point on them. And what was that? What was that halftime stat in rushing? 12 yards? Wow. Third down, 18. We got one of the top defenses in the league. Oh, oh yeah. and the Cobras are gonna jump offside and ouch that hurts some more. That's gonna hurt you. Yeah, in the critical time of the game, that is that's crucial. Before the snap, false start, offense, number 16, five yard penalty. Repeat the down, third down. It's third and forever now. They really got to come up with a big play here. At least try to get half of it and most of it back, Tim. And then go for it on fourth down because, again, the way that this Garden Valley team is playing, they got some confidence. They might not get the ball back. If they do, it won't be much time left in the game. Well, if they need a big play, it's right here. The doctor needs to give it to them. And it looks like wow. it's not going to happen. Another great night nice job on the defense. You can see right here. Effort is rolling out. You got pressure on him. Collarwood now has a negative 12 yards on offense. They have to punt the ball. They can't take the chance. It's going forward that far on fourth down. Now it's up to this defense to go three and out. So now the Garden Valley, the Garden Valley offense, they could become the biggest heroes of this game if they can sustain the drive and hold on to the football. Yeah, so all they have to do is get first down. There you are, you're looking at Danny Solomon, the head coach of the Garden Valley Falcons. He can smell it now. <laughs> he can smell it. Danny's like, just don't mess up the snap. Don't fumble the football. <laughs> Excellent. That's right. Just play your game. Nice. Boys coming off the football, running right, right at him. There we go, Taylor. You almost got to think he's going to keep keep the ball in LaShawn Ferris hands, John. It's a brick rip on first down. Yeah, he gave it to one of his uh, one of his better athletes on the team right there. That different look where they put the wide receivers in the backfield. Gave it to Orr, and Orr knew just what to do with it. The offensive line did a good job of keeping the hat on the man and keeping those feet moving. Make it second and short. Uh, nothing doing. It looked like I he think the uh, progress might have gotten the first down with the forward. Well, they only down. needed a couple, and they did. Yep. Right. So first down, Garden Valley, Sirius Jones, and again, Stefan Hall, a whole host, Collinwood, but more importantly, the clock has now become a friend of the Garden Valley Falcons. Four and a half minutes to go in the ball game. The Collinwood Cobras trying to get the ball back here, make a stop, give their offense one more chance. Fair keeper. Right behind the left guard. Oh, trying to get that ball out of there. Almost got it out. Picks up about four yards. He's brought down by Christopher Lucius, the defensive tackle. Yeah. You see right here where one Cobra secured fair. The other guy tried to rip it out. He juggled it a little bit. If somebody would have been right there while he was trying to get the control of it, it might have popped out of there. The Cobra's just got to keep fighting. They got to keep fighting. Got to keep hitting. Second down six. 3.30 to go in a ball game. Uh, 
right, they went back to that formation again. Well, Orr and Jones in the backfield. Trying to get outside. Make a tackle. Not gonna happen and made a mistake on going outside. I'm sorry, not Orr. Look at the wrong team. Bailey and Valentine. Valentine's had a real good game. A very good game. So Jones and Romel Phillips are on the tackle. Excuse me. With three minutes, 17 seconds to go in the fourth quarter. Garden Valley seven, Collinwood zero. Looking at some laundry. Doing the run, holding offense. Number 12, 10-yard penalty from the spot of the foul. Wow. Repeat the down, second down. They wouldn't call a hold, would they, John? <laughs> <laughs> yeah, yeah. Keon Johnson Let's got Let's look at it here and see if we can pick it up. There's a guy, he was laid off the line right of scrimmage. Right there, I see it. He's, grabbed, he's yeah. holding him for dear life. Yeah, yeah, he is. He was laid off the line of scrimmage. Well, Carl Brown, your officials have been right on it all day today. Yes, sir. Yeah, that's Makes uh, me proud. <laughs> Kaylon Bailey. Uh-oh. Oh, here we go. That's trouble. Got first down? No. Almost. Almost. Number five. Matthew Valentine comes up big time, changing the formation, took fair out of the backfield, gives it to the other all-star, the other athlete, the other big play guy, and he makes a big play a for one. him. It's a first down, he's calling that a one. Yeah, that, that might have broke the Cobra's back right there. 230 and counting. That play is the biggest play of the game right there by Mr. Valentine. First down and 10, 2, 15 and running. He's gonna hold on and pick up a couple yards. There he goes, falling forward again. Cobra's got to want it. The Cobras have got to want it. This defense has got to stand up. This is their first championship game. It's understandable, but they got to, they got to, they got to want it. They yep. got to want it. Somebody's got to make a play. That's for sure. And they got to stop them before time runs out. 130 going in the game. Clock's running. <coughs> Collinwood Cobras came off a overtime playoff win. Again, big hole, big hole. And again, he's momentum. just carrying them all the way through. Wow. First down, Garden Valley. Going to the house. That did it. That's a fresh set of downs. That'll do it. They can take a knee now, Tim. Absolutely. They can take a knee. Well, I can tell you one thing, folks. Corey Orr and Brandon Morgan on the stop, but a little bit too late. But I got and guarantee you one thing, John, the ball is going to stay in one guy's hands. Yes. They yes, won't take is. a chance. Mm -hmm. He may be trying to get him to kneel. Yeah, exactly. I think that's what he communicated to Ralph. He's going to take a knee. Oh, no, they're going to try to score. They're going to run a play. He's going to almost get there. That should be the last play of the game. Clock runs. If they stay in, they've done it. And they definitely celebrated with Danny getting the old bucket tossing or the water. <laughs> and it's got to be the greatest feeling in the world. Yes, it has. Long season starting in June. We got a timeout here. Somebody's hurt. They get a timeout. Somebody's down on the field. They're checking them. Now, Carl, in this situation, they, the, can they set the clock and start it, or will they have to snap the ball here? Well, a situation where there's an injured player, uh, nothing will happen, Tim, until that player is administered to. Because the, uh, the most uh, important thing out of all of this is the safety of these children. 
It's paramount. But once we resume play, when the clock once starts? Once he's off the field, the clock will run. The clock will run? Okay. Yes, they sir. can start it right there once they get it set again. Yes, sir. They don't have to snap it. So you got to think Garden Valley. And actually, they don't even have to take another snap. Because once the injured player is off the field, the coaches leave, the clock will re resume. And so they don't even have to take a snap. I want to tell you, uh, Coach Morgan has nothing to be ashamed of. These Col Collinwood Cobras have nothing to be ashamed of today. They had a great season, gave a great effort today. Uh, things just didn't click the way that they wanted them to. And it was just one successful drive. The Garden Valley was able to get into the end zone. That's it. Two great teams, but only one can win. Okay, so he pointed to the snap, and now he'll kneel down. And Collinwood is called timeout. Yeah, they want to. They want. They want to talk to their kids some more. They just want to talk to them. Yeah, at this age, there's a lot of emotion. Yeah. And uh, these kids, uh, they've well, they, worked hard all year. Well, they respect that uh, timeout. I see that they're not letting the coaches. They want to sub some kids in. They're trying to get some kids onto the field, play. Remember, folks, Jason Dunn, our league director, will be down on the field with our Danny put some kids Both teams in. and the team presentation. And uh, we'll have the outstanding defense and offensive player. We'll see if you can match them. So the Garden Valley Falcons, it appears, Mr. Good, that they have been crowned in moments away to their first city championship in the Cleveland Muni Football yeah, League. Yeah, yeah, yeah. And, it, and on the 100th year anniversary, it's a very special moment for those kids. And uh, I hope that they remember this for next year and the year after, and they carry it on through their life as being champions, sticking together, loving each other, working together, And being champions in other things in life. Somebody gotta be up. Go, somebody step up, step up, step up. Good. Oh, they're gonna run the football. Not letting him get in. Good quick whistle. So they call a timeout here. Fourth down play with 12 seconds to go. They got one, they have one play left in them, maybe two. Oh, well, they're uh, fighting to the end. I'm shocked they don't just kneel it out. I, I just, uh, I don't understand all the deep, the timeouts with the defense. First one I understood, you want to get him in. Okay, the second one doesn't make no sense, but hey. Football is a funny game, they tell me, Mr. Brown. Is that true? That it is, Tim. It's, uh, it can be very, very uh, strange at times. But at this point in the game, it's about safety because it's pretty much a done deal. Yeah. Yeah, but don't know. I don't even. I don't know any coach that don't want to go out firing. So when he had the opportunity with the timeouts, he at least want to go out with the ball in his hand, trying to run a play, trying to get on the board. It's only seven nothing. Anything can happen. So 12 seconds to go in the ball game. Anything can happen. Anything. Garden Valley just got to be smart. Oh, and then Lord. You have, mental, then you have a mental error like that, trying to be anxious to make a play. If he just went in and went in motion. <laughs> Which he could have done. He could have done. He wouldn't have uh, he wouldn't even got Number a Number 28, five-yard penalty. Correction. Half the distance to the goal. Repeat the down. First down. But then again, that's the IQ of players. When you talk about experienced teams and inexperienced teams, Collinwood Cobras 
they are getting there. Again, they're ahead of track. So Collinwood has the ball now, first down and forever and ever. <laughs> and uh, they got to be careful here because now if you, you you get a sack or a penalty in the end zone, you got a safety. And this is exactly what it looks like. Interception? Yep. Oh, no, it came out. It's complete. <laughs> we got another play. That offensive line got a block. That they do. They got a block. I mean, uh, Garden Valley's not going to lay down. John, isn't it that uh, thing you always hear in football? You got to play to the last whistle. I play the last whistle. I mean, absolutely. They had three timeouts left, and uh, you know you're going to sit on the football. They're going to use the timeouts again. I, I don't know any coach worth his salt that don't want to go out firing, especially seven nothing. Yeah. From one big play, things change. And we know it can happen. Yes, it can. <laughs> this should do it, unless it's a home run. We're going to throw it deep over the middle. Incomplete. And that should do it. The Garden Valley Falcons. It's no oh, oh, people oh, happy oh, in oh. the house. I think that's basically frustration. I don't think the child is hurt. Yeah, they yeah. all want to get out there and celebrate. But the field is there. It's, it's not the spectators, so. Well, we'll be right back, folks. Who will it be? Our outstanding defense and offensive players. And Jason Dunn will be down on the field right after this time. Open-minded people. The spirit of innovation. Passion. Action. Rock and roll. Cleveland. 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 We are Cleveland. We are Jason Dunn, director of Cleveland Muni Football League, down on the field after an exciting 2019 Pee Wee Division Championship game between the Collinwood Cobras and Garden Valley Falcons. I'm here on the field right now with our 2019 Pee Wee Division runner-ups, the Collinwood Cobras. We'll first start off with bringing up our defensive player of the game with five tackles Two touchdown saving tackles. Number five, Sirius Jones. <laughs> Sirius Jones, you've been here before, right? Yes, sir. Okay. Uh, prior to the start of the game, I heard I heard a lot of buzz. I heard your name being thrown around up in the press box. Uh, a lot of people are familiar with you. You've been doing this for a long time. Uh, you're a scholar athlete. You get great uh, good grades in school. Would you like to thank anybody today? I, I'm thankful for my coaches and my mom for bringing me here today. Okay. Thanks a lot, Sirius. So you are, for your outstanding performance today, the 2019 Defensive Player of the Game. Thanks, Sirius. 
Now, I'm joined on the field today with Ms. Karen Butler, Chief Operating Officer of NEI Health Services. Karen will be presenting our runner-up City Championship Trophy. Thanks so much, Jason. This is such an exciting opportunity to recognize an outstanding effort. And so, on behalf of Muni League, we are so excited to present to you this wonderful trophy for the 2019 City Runner-Up. Congratulations. So, what was your experience like today? Great effort out here. Man, it was a crazy experience today. These guys played their butts off all year, and they came and laid it all on the line today. So hats off to the Garden Valley Falcons for a great game played. And I also want to say great job to my guys. They came out here, laid it all on the line, and they played their butts off. Can't ask for nothing more. <laughs> nothing better than that. Thank you so much, and congratulations once again to the entire team. This is Jason Dunn, director of Cleveland Muni Football League. I am now down on the field, joined by your 2019 Pee Wee Division City Champion, Garden Valley Falcons. Now I have another outstanding award to give away today, and I'll be bringing up your 2019 Pee Wee Game Offensive MVP. This young man had a total of 85 yards rushing, 61 of those yards in the second half, with the only touchdown and extra point of the game, and he picked up half a dozen first downs himself. Number one, LaShawn Fair, you wanna join me up here? Man, LaShawn, when I looked at the media guy and I looked at the attributes, I looked at size, I looked at your headshot, I said, man, this guy kind of puts me in the mold of, of a Byron Leftwich, you know, of a Cam Newton. And the performance you put on display today was real Cam Newtons. So you want to talk about what it took for you to get this win today? I don't know what to say. <laughs> Hard work. Hard work. Hey, do you want to thank anybody today? My t teammates were blocking for me. Coaches running the plays that we needed. And your offensive line should definitely share in this accomplishment today because they did a wonderful job of blocking for you and picking up those first downs and moving the chains. So without further ado, I want to present you with the 2019 Pee Wee Game Offensive MVP. Here you go, LaShawn. Now, once again, I'm joined by Ms. Karen Butler, Chief Operating Officer of Neon Health Services, to present Coach Danny Solomon with the championship trophy. All right, it's really great when it all comes together, right? So all of the hard work, all of the practicing, all of the determination brought the win home, right? right. So on behalf of Muni League, we are absolutely proud to present to you the 2019 City Championship Award. Congratulations! <laughs> All right, what y'all say, Garden Valley? Yeah. All right. <laughs> so congratulations again for making it happen. Congratulations, team, parents, coaches, referees, everybody who had a part in this. Great job. Hats off to you. Well, we close out our award ceremony down on the field. We would like to thank the Collinwood Cobras, the Garden Valley Falcons, all of our fans, supporters, volunteers, and I want to toss it back up to you, Tim. Well, it's been a great day here for the Pee Wee Championship game, John. We saw two outstanding teams play here today, but when it came down to the end, it was LaShawn Fair and his heart and dedication and not, not to be determined he was going to make sure that was going to happen. Yes, yes, Tim. He, he, had, he made a great effort today in a championship moment, as champion as he is. Uh, put the team on his back and rode him right to a championship. Uh, you also got to get your hats off to that offense and defensive line. 
They came out and try, established uh, the line of scrimmage, and they did what they had to do throughout the game in order to bring it home for Coach Danny Solomon and his staff. Well, folks, we, before we leave, we'd like you to take a look at some of the faces, some of the great plays that are part of the 2019 Pee Wee Championship. And we want you to stay right with us because when we come back, we will have the 2019 Bantamweight Championship game between the Glenville Elite Panthers and the Maple Heights Saints. So for John Good, I'm Tim Wells. We'll be right back after this break.